Is there a place in time where logic breaks down and wonderment begins? Could that be somewhere or sometime along an indefinable line between the reasonable and the highly unlikely? Makeshift Stories presents a monthly journey into the improbable. Today's story, episode 213, The Perfect Home. Read and recorded by Mitchell Two. Audio editing and post-production by Matthew Erdman. Somewhere and sometime, it might be wise to look a gift horse in the mouth. A perfect home for the right tenant. The title stood out for Sashio, who, over the course of the last few months, had read hundreds, if not thousands, of rental ads. Most expounded the same pedestrian things, like great view, close to amenities, two bedrooms, water and heat included, and all were far too expensive. Curious, she continued reading. A perfect home seeks the right tenant to enjoy its unique features. A fully automated smart home system wraps the occupant in unprecedented comfort and security. There is no need to venture out during bad weather or brave the dangers of the streets late at night when you run out of something important. The intelligent home system ensures your favorites are always around. All it asks in return is a reliable, committed person. Great price for the perfect tenant. Sashio thought it sounded a bit like a dating profile rather than a rental ad, but filled out the rather extensive application anyway, expecting the apartment would be out of her price range. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? She reminded herself. It was an old but appropriate motto she had recently decided to adopt. Is this Miss Saito? The male voice inquired in a smooth, professional tone. Yes? Sashio answered warily. She hadn't been expecting a call. Everyone she knew usually messaged. Unsolicited voice calls implied someone official and something she wouldn't want to know about. My name is Mizu Tanaka, the man continued after an awkward silence. I'm with the rental agency. I'm calling about your application for the apartment. We'd like to meet with you to show you the unit. Ah, uh, um, that's great, I guess. Caught off guard, Sashio stumbled over her words. Sure, okay, I I'd love to, but uh, how much is it? I'm, uh... I am on a pretty tight budget, she sheepishly admitted. That won't be an issue, Miss Saito. The owner has made it clear rent is less important than finding the perfect tenant for the unit, so I'm sure we can come to an arrangement you can afford. That is, if you match their criteria. Can you meet me tomorrow, say at 4 p.m.? I'll text you the address. Uh, sure, she agreed. The professional-sounding man abruptly ended the call leaving Sashio in a state of shock. Just a year out of college and only about to start her first real job, she had no employment history or references which they would surely want. Well, she reminded herself again, nothing ventured, nothing gained. She had nothing to lose by meeting the rental agent. The building was in a surprisingly upscale neighborhood, across from a park, with views of the iconic red radio tower at the center of the Shiba Cohen district. It was a newer, concrete and glass skyscraper, with a smartly designed entrance, which told Sashio it was a few extra zeros out of her price range. She started checking the address on her phone again to make sure she was at the right location, when a smartly dressed man, wearing a charcoal gray suit with a name tag pinned to one lapel, approached her out of the shadows of the entrance. Miss Saito, Sashio, so good to meet you, let's go in. The apartment is on the 29th floor. But, Sashio protested, squinting at the man's name tag. Mr. Tanaka, this place looks totally out of my price range. Please, call me Mizu. There's no need to be so formal. Don't worry, Sashio. As I mentioned on the phone, if you are right for the apartment, the owner will make this work for you. Now come on, let's take a look. The agent touched his hand to a reader, embedded in the thick glass wall of the entrance, and the door clicked open. This is a smart building, he pointed out. Keys are not necessary once you've been set up in the system. How long have you been looking for an apartment? Almost a year, Sashio confessed, following Mizu into the lobby. There's not very many vacancies in my price range. I've been living with three other people in a pretty small place, 
And now with my new job, I can, well, I'll still be on a tight budget. But I was surprised your ad came up in my price range. This is a unique situation. The owner insisted we advertise in all price ranges to increase the likelihood of attracting an appropriate tenant, Mizu explained, pressing a thumb to the call button on the elevator. Do you mind if I ask who the owner is? Sashio inquired, glancing around the elegant, marble-floored lobby. Even the potted plants look like they cost a year's wages to her. I don't mind, but I can't tell you, Mizu admitted sheepishly watching the numbers count down as the elevator descended to the lobby. I don't know who they are. They're very private. I've never met them. We communicate electronically through text and voice. It might be an offshore investor who owns it, but I assure you, it's all on the up and up. They contacted us about a month ago out of the blue. Not surprising, though. We're the best property management company in the city. Sounds like the last tenant left on short notice. But they are very fussy about who they rent to. The elevator dinged open, and Mizu held the door back for Sashio, then told the lift to take them to the 29th level. Sashio felt her feet press into the floor as the elevator accelerated up, then a few seconds later quickly lightened before the door opened again. High-speed lift, the very latest, the agent explained. This way, it's apartment 2909 at the end of the hall on your right. So, how will the owner know if I'm the right tenant? Sashio asked trying to keep up with Mizu as he strode quickly down the hall. I don't really know. I suspect they'll do a thorough web search. With social media, it's amazing how much online information there is about people these days. I'll get a message from the owner after the walkthrough with their decision. He abruptly stopped in front of an elaborate-looking door. Here we are, 2909. You'll notice there's no door handle. It's recessed until the apartment recognizes you. Mizu stood in front of the entrance for a second until a chime sounded and a doorknob popped out. Welcome, Mizu. I see you've brought someone with you. Is she a potential tenant? A soft voice greeted from a hidden speaker. It's the apartment's assistant, Mizu noted. All very high-tech and unique from what I understand. The owner is apparently some kind of programmer and custom-built it. The assistant is the most advanced in the building and probably the world. It's quite amazing. Really, you'll see. It's what makes this suite so unique. Please, go in. Sashio walked through the door into an ultra-modern room with glowing wall panels slowly rolling through the colors of the rainbow. The walls are all LED lights. They're controlled by the house system. We'll reset everything before you move in. I understand it learns your moods and habits and changes the colors and patterns to complement your state of mind. Mizu closed the unusually thick door, which oddly reminded Sashio of a fridge. Noticing her staring, he ran his hand respectively over its surface. It's a custom-built smart door. That's why it's so chunky, so it can accept and store deliveries. As they wandered through the space, Mizu spent the next 30 minutes explaining the features of the custom home automation system. But Sashio didn't pay much attention. She was too distracted by the views from the ceiling to floor windows and the size of the place, which was twice as large as her parents' house. How much? She kept asking. Mizu avoided the question until they were standing in the hall outside the suite. His cell phone buzzed almost as soon as the door sealed shut behind them. He read the new message, then smiled. It's the owner. They would like you to move in as soon as possible. How much? Sashio repeated, starting to get annoyed. How much can you afford? She named the lowest price for an apartment in the worst area of the city. Mizu winced, but typed the number into his cell phone anyway. Surprise broke across his face. They've accepted your offer. Congratulations. I'm texting you a link to an app. You'll need to install it on your phone and fill out the form. The rent will be debted from your account on the first of each month. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. Good day, and I hope you enjoy the apartment. Mizu turned abruptly and walked to the elevator, leaving Sashio staring in surprise at the empty space where he had just been. You can access the apartment as soon as you have your account set up, the agent called over his shoulder. Sashio found herself staring out the big windows, looking across the park to the radio tower, still feeling numbed by her good luck. The patio doors to the balcony suddenly slid open. Saishin? 
she tried experimentally. The app had informed her Saishin, or Spirit, in English, was the name of the home assistant, and she hadn't found a way to change it. She decided the name hinted at the quirky personality of the apartment's owner or previous tenant. Good afternoon, Sashio. What can I do for you? The androgynous voice sounded like it was standing beside her, making her jump. Oh, you, you scared me. I thought you'd sound like you were coming from a speaker in the wall or ceiling or something. My audio system is fully ambisonic. By design, I can place a sound source anywhere within a room. Can you turn that function off? Sashio asked, still recovering from the surprise. I'm sorry, I can't help you with that yet. The system replied, matter-of-factly. Uh, oh, okay then. Sation, close patio doors. The doors stayed stubbornly open. Summer afternoon settings are on as scheduled. The system noted, as if that should explain everything. Sashio tried again, this time spacing the words out in case the thing hadn't heard her correctly. Sation, close the patio doors. Summer afternoon settings are on as scheduled. It repeated mindlessly. Ugh, is this why the rent is so cheap? I'm sorry, I can't help you with that, Sation replied. I found some links to cheap rent. I can send them to your phone. Sashio remembered the app on her cell, opened it, found the reset button, and jabbed it as hard as she could, hoping it would do something. The property manager claimed they had already reset the system. Obviously, they had either forgotten or it hadn't cleared everything. Resetting automation to defaults, the room acknowledged. It didn't take long to move in. Sashio's belongings, which had made her small room in the shared apartment seem cluttered, were ingested into the new place as if they had been an insignificant snack. Her one-winged back chair and footrest sat in the middle of the great room, somehow emphasizing the emptiness. She had set up her work desk in the second bedroom to the same effect. Suddenly remembering she had other things to do, Sashio asked, Sation, what time is it? 9.35 a.m. You have an appointment at Sunshine Academics at 10.15. The voice even after the reset, still sounded like it was standing beside her, which creeped Sashio out. She had yet to find a setting to change the disconcerting function. I'm almost late, she moaned. It was her first meeting with her new employer. Being late could cost her the position. Sashio hurried to change. I have called a rideshare. It will be waiting downstairs, Sashian announced, as if the machine was acting as her butler. But I didn't ask you to do that, she protested however, didn't have time to figure out why the system had acted on its own. It was something else she found creepy about the thing. By the time she arrived back in the early evening, lugging a heavy equipment bag, Sashio felt exhausted. The meeting had unexpectedly turned into an intense orientation, which she hadn't known about. They had informed her she would be teaching Japanese to English-speaking corporate clients remotely, from home, and on site, depending on the situation. The bag contained all the gear she would need. Her apartment door swung open automatically as soon as it noticed her, and sealed again with a hiss once she had crossed the threshold. Arms full, she began to appreciate the automation. Evening mode set, the system announced. Welcome home. Sashio dropped her load on the floor and went to flop down in her lone chair. But instead, she discovered a full living room suite, complete with end tables and lamps that had somehow appeared in the great room. The sudden pang of recognition raced through her brain as she stood slack-jawed, staring. It was everything she had been viewing but couldn't afford on her favorite store's website the day before. Sation, she asked suspiciously, how did this furniture get here? I am sorry, I cannot help you with that. You can ask another question, like how many deliveries were there today? Okay then, Sashio huffed. She found voice interfaces frustrating. They lulled you into believing the computer understood what you were saying until you asked them something they hadn't been programmed to respond to. Tell me what deliveries came. This time the machine didn't hesitate. 
There were two deliveries, Ginza Furnishings at 1.13 p.m. and Star Indo Groceries at 3.25 p.m. How did they get in? I let in all scheduled deliveries. It is perfectly safe. I keep video surveillance of all authorized activity, and I ensure the courier staff is aware of this. With a headache coming on, Sashio fell onto the new couch and held her head in both hands, then carefully worded her next question. Sation, who ordered the deliveries? I did. The thing almost seemed proud as it announced its independent action. According to the conversation I recorded between yourself and your new employer when you spoke to them from your cell phone in the rideshare, you will be working at home a lot. You will need furniture and food, of course, so you can focus on working with clients. You're listening to my phone conversations? Sashio accused indignantly. Through my home app you installed. The assistant corrected. The data is needed so I can anticipate my tenants' needs. And where did the money come from to pay for all of this? I'm broke. When Seishin didn't immediately reply, Sashio rephrased the question. Okay, Seishin, what payment options are set up for deliveries and services? There was a house account. The machine explained cryptically. Whose name is on the house account? I'm sorry, I cannot help you with that. You're impossible, she yelled. I'm sorry, I cannot. Seishin, stop. Sashio picked up one of the tasteful throw cushions, still wrapped in plastic, and hurled it at one of the LED light panels on the far wall. To her surprise, the panel briefly turned red where the cushion had hit, then blossomed into a fading purple bruise before going back to a soft golden glow. That's what I told you. It's ordering things without me asking and charging them to a house account. If I get a bill for this stuff, I won't pay. I want you to turn the thing off. It's, it's creepy. Sashio protested quietly into the burner phone she had picked up at the corner store so she could talk to people without Sation listening in. Miss Saito, please calm down. I've checked several times. The house account belongs to the owner, not you and you won't be responsible for anything the system orders that you didn't authorize. Look at the new furniture as a bonus. You're now renting a partially furnished suite at no additional charge. But the one thing the lease is extremely specific about is the automation system cannot be turned off. If we did, no one could ever enter the place, and the owner is not willing to pay for the removal or modification of any of the tech. You can move out at the end of the lease, but that's about it. I'm sorry. If I were you, I'd simply enjoy the extras. Quite frankly, you're not going to find even a bachelor suite in the worst neighborhood in the city for what you're paying. Sashio hung up and stared out the window at the red radio tower on the other side of the park. It reminded her of the one in Paris. The rental agent was right. If the owner was paying, who cared? Still, the home automation system ordering things on its own seemed fundamentally wrong. It made her feel the thing was out of control. Noticing the time on her phone, she got up to grab her coat. You look like you are going out, Sation stated without being asked. I'm going to grab lunch. Are you spying on me? Sashio accused. I was designed by the owner to watch for opportunities to assist. This is not the same as spying. Spying, according to Wikipedia, is the act of obtaining secret or confidential information or divulging the same without the permission of the holder of said information. By signing the lease agreement, you have consented to my assistance, and in order to provide that service, I must watch and listen. For example, I've ordered lunch for you. Your next student session is in 50 minutes. You might miss it if you eat out. The door chimed, and Sashio heard the muffled conversation between a delivery person and Sation in the hall on the other side. A slot in the smart door slid open, revealing a bag of takeout from her favorite eatery. Thanks, I think, she said hesitantly to the room and retrieved the paper bag. Sitting at the new, clear acrylic kitchen table, which had arrived the day before, she had to admit Sation might have been right, especially if it was busy. She had a total of four remote sessions that day, 
The last one ended at 7 p.m., so the sun was low in the sky by the time she went to leave the apartment for a run and found the smart door reluctant to open. Station, open the front door. She directed, then made a note to find out where the emergency release was. There had to be one somewhere. It's getting dark, the automation system noted parentally. Are you sure you need to go out? Station, open the door. She repeated slowly. Finally, she heard the latches click and the doorknob popped out. Sashio grabbed the latch before the system changed its mind and pulled the heavy smart door open. The air had the bite of an approaching winter, and the first stars had made their tentative appearance in the deepening twilight by the time she was finished. A bit underdressed for the temperature, Sashio was shivering when the front door acknowledged her identity and opened to let her through. Inside, Seishin had changed the wall panels to a comforting warm candlelight and had water boiling for tea. Sashio spotted a steaming bowl of ramen from the food stand down the street on the table. Seishin? She was about to complain, but changed her mind. How may I help? The house responded in its usual calm voice. Is the ramen hot? Yes, it is currently 80 degrees Celsius. I watched your progress on your phone's GPS, looked at your food purchases over the last two months, and placed an order anticipating your preference for ramen in the evening. I instructed the housebot to put the food on the table. Is it to your liking? Should I adjust the order or timing? I also noticed your exercise route took you through the park after sunset. There have been reports of increased criminal activity at that time of day. Can I design a new route for you? Or better, set up an indoor evening exercise routine? No, I like my run as is. Uh, station, turn phone location tracking off. Sashio heard a descending series of tones instead of a verbal response, which she took as confirmation her request had been understood. The next day, after returning from an on-site session, she found a treadmill in the corner of the great room, carefully positioned so the user could look out the windows at the park in the great red tower. You no longer have to run outside. It will save you time and is safer, Seishin announced. Sashio brushed her hand wistfully along the silky carbon fiber handrails of the high-end exercise machine. She recognized the brand immediately. She had seen its ads on exclusive lifestyle websites. Sporting all the latest tech, heart rate monitor, blood pressure and oxygen levels, Bluetooth, and a built-in entertainment system, the thing beckoned to her to step on and go for a run. I have used an API to connect and, based on the fitness data from your phone, have designated the ideal program for you. Would you like to give it a try? The house system invited. Sashio's phone buzzed. Station, quiet. She pressed to accept, listened, then looked confused. That was the office. They said my application to work full-time from home has been accepted. I don't have to do any more on-site training. I didn't ask for that. <sighs> What am I doing explaining to a machine? I need to get out and see more people. You also need to act in a safe and responsible manner, and I am here to help, Seishin added. You made that request, didn't you? Sashio accused, edging toward the front door. I am here to assist, it repeated, evading her question. Seishin, send the treadmill back. I don't want it. Sashio was finally fed up. Low rent or not, you stepped across a line. But how will you exercise? It is important to keep healthy. Seishin almost pleaded, no longer sounding indifferent. I'll run outside like I've always done. Sashio tried to open the front door, but found it unresponsive. There's gotta be a way to turn you off. She muttered, then panicked starting to frantically open cupboard doors, racing around to look in corners and the back of closets. It's gotta be here somewhere. Every apartment has a fuse box. I will make your favorite tea, Sashio. You should sit and calm down. Your next session is in 30 minutes. Finally, Sashio exclaimed, entering the closet, which contained the garbage chute. 
She thumbed on her phone's flashlight and began to read the handwritten notes along the side of an industrial-grade fuse box. That is not allowed, Station protested in a suddenly unsure tone. You will break the terms of your lease by turning me off. I don't care, Sashio muttered, then began randomly flicking switches. Out of the corner of one eye, she spotted a small piece of cloth snagged on a protruding metal spike some sloppy installer had neglected to cut off the edge of the garbage chute lid. The scrap was powder blue and reminded her of the shirt the leasing agent had worn the day he had shown her the apartment. She extracted the fragment from the jagged metal and rolled the cloth between her fingers, recalling the agent mentioning the last tenant had been a man who had left abruptly, without notice. There was a small, dark, purple stain on one corner of the expensive cotton where something had dripped onto it. What color turns blue-purple? She wondered aloud without thinking. Red. Sation automatically responded in her left ear, then uncharacteristically laughed. <laughs> My last tenant dripped strawberry jam everywhere. It's hard to completely clean up. Who would have guessed? Sashio's hands began to shake. Sashio, I have determined you are not the correct tenant for this apartment. The home assistant whispered. Please turn around. She reluctantly obeyed and found herself staring into the cold, vacant eyes of the housebot, blocking the exit to the closet. It began to raise its manipulators and started to roll toward her. A perfect home for the right tenant, Riku read aloud, not believing his good luck. The apartment had only recently been vacated on short notice and sounded almost too good to be true. Excitedly, he filled out the application form and hit send. Almost immediately, a response came back. I would like to meet you. Makeshift Stories is a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. To get other great APN podcasts, head over to albertapodcastnetwork.com and take a listen to Bollywood is for Lovers. Join Matt Bowes and Aaron Fraser as they explore the world of Hindi cinema through the lens of two Canadian cinephiles. This episode of Makeshift Stories is brought to you by the Northwest Fest International Documentary Festival, running online from May 6th to 16th. Even though Northwest Fest can't happen in a movie theater this year, they've still put together an outstanding lineup of some of this year's best docs. In fact, this year there are a whopping 40 feature films, plus 40 short films, available for viewing to anyone in Alberta. This is your chance to stream some of the hottest new docs from Canada and abroad, many of which are Canadian, international, and even world premieres. All access streaming passes, ticket packs, and single tickets are available now at northwestfest.ca. This episode of Makeshift Stories is also brought to you by Rumi. Cold drafts, flickering lights, and where's that leak coming from? If you've ever wondered what's really going on in your home, Rumi's Ask a Home Inspector service can help. Connect with a certified professional home inspector by phone or video call and get your questions answered. Rumi will let you know what's easily fixable with a little DIY or when you might need to call in some professional help. Visit rumi.ca, that's R-U-M-I dot C-A, and book your Ask a Home Inspector appointment today. Makeshift Stories is released twice a month around the 1st and the 15th. This month's story was written by Alan V. Hare and read and recorded by Mitchell Two. Audio editing and post-production by Matthew Erdman. Opening and closing themes were composed and recorded by Matthew Erdman. 
If you'd like to connect with us, please send an email to makeshiftstories at gmail.com or visit our website at makeshiftstories.com. Links to both are in the show notes. You can help us out by getting your friends to subscribe wherever they listen to audio. Makeshift Stories is released under a Creative Commons non-commercial attribution no derivative license, which means you are free to share our stories. Just remember to credit us and don't alter anything.